Well, hello viewers. Today's uh, review is going to be on the H&K MP5K PDW. Uh, this particular one is a converted gun. It started its life as a, a Bobcat Arms BW89. It's a registered SBR, and for those of you who are worried, all every gun that I uh, review is either a registered NFA item or a legally owned uh, non-NFA item. This one is a registered NFA item. It was converted from a uh, pistol into a short barreled rifle. So let's go ahead and begin the review. First things first, we're going to go ahead and clear the weapon. And as you can see, magazine is empty. And if we look down there, the chamber's empty. All right. So let's begin. So, uh, for those of you who are familiar with these guns, the uh, MP5K PDW was a shortened version of the MP5 uh, submachine gun, and it was um, was designed for um, for use in very close quarter in very close quarter situations, such as uh, personal protection details, uh, inside vehicles, that type of thing. The PDW version was updated uh, originally, I believe the first customer for the PDW was the U.S. Navy SEALs. Uh, they wanted a very compact 9mm uh, submachine gun that could operate uh, with them in close quarter combat, and that's why they developed it. Let's go over the gun uh, from nose to tail, and uh, I'll show you a few things about uh, what to look for when you are when you're building out a clone or something like that with uh, with one of these. So <clears throat> first and foremost, the uh, H and K um, difference between an MP5K and an MP5K PDW is the PDW has a three lug barrel uh, and has the H and K uh, three lug barrel flash hider on it, just like this one here. Now this can be removed. Uh, you simply uh, move that tab and rotate this and it will come off and underneath there is a three lug barrel and the newer ones which this one also has is uh, also threaded at half by 28 uh, pitch so you can put a suppressor on there so it's suppressor friendly. Um, PDWs are going to have the uh, uh, different uh, hand grip than an MP5 obviously it's a much shorter barrel much shorter uh, front end on these guns and so this particular one is going to have a what they call a broom handle front end on it You've got the uh, traditional H&K hooded front sight and um, of course the charging handle. Now uh, one thing for the record, I always see people and you've heard of the H&K slap and that's where people slap their hand forward and slap the bolt group forward and for those of you who are in the know, uh, people that do the H&K slap probably don't know a whole lot about H&Ks. Yes, it is true the gun uh, likes to be handled uh, roughly, but not that roughly. Um, the way they used to teach it in the H&K sub, sub gun school is to take the palm of your hand and simply roll it across there and let the let the uh, let the bolt uh, uh, fall forward naturally under the recoil spring. Uh, those of you who uh, do the old karate chop on it, what you're going to do is you're going to wear out that lug right there and you're going to slam the bottom of the charging handle into this area right here. It's completely unnecessary. So um, this gun is blowback operated. <clears throat> it's actually delayed roller blowback operated. There are rollers um, that are built into the bolt that hold the bolt closed for just a few milliseconds after you pull the trigger. And that's one of the reasons why this was so accurate in comparison to a lot of the uh, original uh, submachine guns like the Mac-10 and the Uzi that, that fired from an open bolt. Um, these guns uh, would fire A from a closed bolt which was much more accurate because when you pulled the trigger only the hammer moved instead of having the whole bolt assembly slam fire on the round. Um, so when you pull the trigger on this gun, hammer falls forward, strikes the, uh, strikes the uh, primer on the bullet, bullet goes off, the bolt assembly stays motionless until actually the bullet has already left the uh, barrel of the gun at which time the delayed roller blowback action allows the bolt to travel backwards and so it's much more reliable than the um, original submachine guns which were all open bolt. Um, 
so some other things about this gun. Um, this has the uh, this particular one has the older uh, SEF lower on it. It is a shelved lower, obviously, because this is a semi-auto gun. Uh, I don't have the uh, I don't have the funds to uh, make this one a full auto anytime soon. Uh, but it is a, a three-position indicated, although only it it does not have uh, both of these are semi-auto settings. Um, <clears throat> does have the paddle mag release and um, the uh, the buttstock on this one is the choke tool uh, proper folding uh, stock. Obviously, it's a nice compact package when that's folded, and it deploys very easily, easily and locks locks into place. So, a couple of things to uh, to note about these guns. Number one are the magazines. Um, this is a modern day H and K MP5 magazine stamp made in Germany and is built by H&K. It is of wonderful quality. It is also hugely expensive. Um, these magazines are about a hundred bucks a piece uh, when you can find them and um, they will uh, they'll break your heart but they'll also make the gun function properly. Um, some of the other things about the gun um, you've got the um, you've got the typical H&K diopter sights on there, um, pull this up so you can get a better view. It's got the typical H and K diopter sights. Um, the open sight is the 100 meter uh, sight, and then you have settings for 200, 300, and 400 meters. Obviously, uh, obviously this gun's not going to shoot out that far, um, but it is very, very simple sighting system, very accurate um, for anybody that's shooting in CQB situation. That's about all you need. Um, of course, the front H and K swing swivel. Say that again. H and K sling swivel up here, and then a um, sling back here on the buttstock. Um, there is a. I also have a uh, flat butt buttstock attachment here. If you're going to be carrying it um, as a true uh, as a true submachine gun, you can remove the uh, the stock as well. A um, couple of things to look for when you're building out a clone. Um, obviously, you want one that's within spec. There's a lot of junk out there. Um, the H and Ks are have always been one of the most copied guns, and there's no shortage of people that want to build them. Um, so what you want to do is number one is make sure that you start out with a high quality receiver. Um, this was one of Bobcat's early ones. It's in spec and it's a nice one. Um, some of the things that you want to look at when you're building one of these is uh, have a look at the mag well, have a look at the stamping, the welding on the gun. Um, if it's real sloppy, um, get another one. Just don't bother with it. Um, you can tell on this one here, uh, the welding right here is very clean. And um, also one of the things to look at <coughs> is the... Uh, is uh, the triple tree right here? So um, what oftentimes happens is when they, st if if it's a bad stamping, this will not be square or this will not be square. I mean, it'll be way off. And if it's one of those, don't bother with it. Um, you want to check your mag fit and finish. Make sure that that it fits properly. Now, one thing um, in in any of these in any of this style of weapon. Um, anytime you insert a magazine, what you want to do is have the bolt open. That's kind of standard practice. So if at any time when you're about to load a magazine up, you're going to pull the bolt back, insert the mag. The mag goes in and sort of rocks into place. It should be nice and tight in there. It should be very little play. And then, of course, roll the bolt home and you're ready to go. Um, these are a lot of fun. This gun attracts a lot of attention every time I'm at the at the range with it uh, because it is quite a movie star it's a lot of fun to shoot and um, I highly recommend one if you have any questions or comments about the way this particular one was built or how it was put together please let me know uh, if you enjoyed the video give me a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe we're gonna be doing a lot more of these videos and a lot more real cool stuff so stay tuned have a wonderful day